What's good YouTube? Promo here, fresh off a top 8 finish from ARG Circuit Series in Orlando. Uh, the event was uh, real fun, you know, I haven't played in a minute. And it was good to jump back into the game, see a bunch of old players. And of course, break that top 16 barrier that I always had a problem with. Uh, before I shortly uh, before I lost top eight to the eventual winner Gustavo so uh, shout out to Gustavo congrats uh, I'm glad that he did hold it down for Florida uh, but the day one it was nine rounds which uh, end up being the second largest uh, circuit series that AIG has had so big ups to Florida for coming out and um, showing up holding it down um, that means that uh, hopefully we can get another circuit series in our area sometime very very soon but uh, my matches for day one it was three burning abyss at beat them all three clay for it I lost to two of them two sh shot offs and one dragons um, my game one matchups were all a little subpar uh, hella grind out um, but uh, with the sideboard for games two and three if we went that far then I was able to hold it down and scrub in as a as the next two 15th place uh, round six I had a feature match versus Nikolai which should be up on the ARG website and my top 16 was live stream so that should be up also um, but let's just jump right into the deck list because that's what everybody really cares about anyway. I main boarded Apocle for Tower. Uh, Tower is one of the boss monsters of the deck. You know, pretty much decks can't really answer it. Uh, he's unaffected by spells, traps, and other monster effects whose level is less than his. So anything nine stars and lower that will activate he will be unaffected by um, I play this deck mostly because of him there's a turn a four card combo that I'll show you guys uh, later that how to drop him and like your opponent can't really answer him like they pretty much have to scoop because it's really hard to beat over him he's essentially 3500 attack uh, I mean boy once shell shell works for the OTK with limited removal which I mean boy other people didn't but attacking twice and piercing that was pretty good for the weekend Three discs, uh, it gets the deck rolling pretty much, fills up the extra deck, and you know allows you to pinch them, summon them back in, you know, OTK your opponent. I ran one odd eyes and one trampolins. Um, I thought odd eyes was a bit slow, uh, although it can search for your scout, which is like the main card for the deck. It you have to wait a turn, so your opponent can like go off. And like, cause your only option is to like activate scouts or whatever. So I thought it was a little slow. Uh, I put it in mostly because I wanted a second tramplings, but I didn't want to play a second tramplings. It gave me the option to search for tramplings and or scout if I needed. And tramplings, of course, is just hex up for like an OTK or sets up for a tower play, which you guys will uh, see later on in a minute. Uh, for the cord, also you got three scouts. You need this. It's, uh, open up with this scout and then that means that you can play Yu-Gi-Oh if not then it's gonna be like a rough game but you know it is what it is uh, three carriers uh, and three helix so people were playing two helix I like to play three because it's a, it's a cleave for it so I can search for it scale nine which helps in case you don't have you know a scout out and but the fact to when it's tributed to pop a back row that's what's most important that's how I run my deck uh, mostly take advantage of the whole tribute factors but with helix and carrier which you will see in some tech cards coming up 16 monsters I believe for spells triple night beam and triple MST I don't like back row fuck them all especially in burning abyss fire Knight is a serious card it's actually the only card that really uh, makes the deck a deck uh, so you hit fire lake or top of fire lake then you're free to Make your play, hopefully OTK your opponent. Uh, three summoners art to go get the scout. Same thing with sacrifices, even though this is one of the best cards in the deck. This is four different effects. Um, two tributes. Uh, your opponent, the monster can't be destroyed by battle. Uh, the A300 attack. 
what the best thing is when it's sit from the to the graveyard, first to the graveyard, you can add one cleave for a muscle from your deck to your hand. So it's like another searcher. It was pretty good. Uh MVP card of the weekend was Mystic Walk. Mystic Walk allows you to tribute one monster. Uh rear side of the field. So tributing is the best part of the card. That means that my effects for a carrier to bounce a monster on the field back to the hand activates helix to pop a back row will also activate um, quick play so it's chainable I can do it during my turn or your turn actually during uh, in my top 16 feature match uh, I won because of mystic walk uh, I end phase uh, walked when they tried to fire lake me I attributed helix so I gained life points and then popped the other back row and then it was forced like to not even have anything so uh, life point gain is also can help out uh, it's good for uh, multiple scout searches, gain life points, and it's good in time. But mostly because it was tri tribute and a quick play. This is what was like MVP for the whole weekend. It won enemy controller. This card was hot tech. Everyone was playing it. Denko Dolls, Burning Abyss. Uh, it's just, you know, it can stop OTK by switching the monster to defense mode, but mainly to tribute, which is good for this deck. Tribute and take control of yours. So, allow me to do some things with that. Uh, yeah. Snatch Steel uh, should be called Steel's Games because this card does. I don't know if Konami was smart by bringing this card back, but especially with three of these floating around all over. But yeah, uh, Snatch Steel is back in the game, guys. <laughs> One limit removal uh, helps out for a shell OTK. I can also OTK with disc, but it's a machine die deck, so like, why don't you play it? So, I like it. I wouldn't drop it. Especially if I'm main board and shell, because shell or limiter is like 56 attack and twice piercing. That should be game no matter what. Uh, one laser clip, field spell searchable. Uh, if you don't have your pendulum skills, you can uh, use the clip and double summon each turn or whatever. Still come along. Laser clip is good. Uh, trap cards now. Uh, another MVP, ceiling ceremony and Mokoton. This card is a continuous trap card, right? It tributes, so please effects to activate. And then you can um, banish up to two cards in your opponent's graveyard. Up to two cards. Mm -hmm. That means that you can, um, in the Burning Abyss matchup, you can hit Fire Lakes, which they can't recycle back. And Shadow, so you can hit like Shadow and El Shadow Fusion, so they can't get that back. But um, a combo with this is like if your opponent has like a Dante on the board, with a, let's say a Seer attached to him, if they detach Seer. To mill three, let's say they mill a graph off the seer, and I have this on the board with the monster. I can uh, activate the effect of Bokuton to tribute one of my earth monsters, and then target your uh, seer and graph that's in the graveyard because it's not activated yet, and then banish them so they won't be able to activate on the next chain because they're not in the graveyard to activate. So that allows me to dodge some plays, and then if I tribute it like a carrier, I can use this effect to bounce your Dante back. Now you have absolutely zero cards to play with. So Mokuton was one of the best cards for the weekend. Uh, yeah, two skill drain and two emptiness rounds off. Uh, Trap for the deck. You know the floodgates. They're real, real good. Emptiness shits on BAs. Skill drain turns all my monsters into huge beaters. So you know they were auto inclusions of the deck. The uh, forty card deck. Uh, take a look at the side the extra. Uh, I called it Klee Synchro because I ran Synchros in the deck. Uh, mainly, Dark Strider Fighter was the reason that I ended up playing this deck. He came back and he said Tribute. So I'm like, hey, please activate when they Tribute. So let's give it a go. But extra deck is one Catastrophe, one Goyo, one Dark Strider Fighter, one Stardust Dragon. This is my Synchro version, uh, Synchro part of the Klee deck. Uh, I never used them that one time. Uh, it was just me, mostly there for show, but this is the reason, Dark Shadow Fighter is the reason why I built the deck in the first place, so the cards busted. I wanted to get a chance to use them, never did, but well. Uh, Xyz, Jacob Sack, because of the Econ and my opponent disc and whatnot, then I can overlay for Jacob Sack. Uh, Thunder Charger, it combos with Vocal Slurs, you know, uh, overlay two scouts for Vocal Slurs, pop, burn for a massive amount, then overlay them for... Thunder Charger and then like between like trample or swing, so he's like a four thousand damage combo. Uh 
it's pretty useful. Uh, one downer for when I take opposing Dante's and overlay them during main phase two. You gotta 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 be careful with this though, cause like you can't exceed main phase two if you have a scout on the board, because you can't switch some anything except for clean monsters. So you know, just into battle phase first, uh, go to main phase two, overlay, then activate like your scout and do some stuff. As long as you shut off the burning abyss, you should be all right. Uh, Ragnar Zero, other forwards in the deck. Uh, on Arc, Castell, Exiton, like probably the only card that I did use this week in that weekend. Roach, Dweller, and a Cowboy. Uh, for the sideboard, uh, two wire taps, which I never used. It was mostly for trap heavy decks, um, stuff like that. And they get a chance to board them in, but wire taps was in there. Uh, three arrows for the mirror match. Uh, you know, it's arrows, arrows. Inflict burn damage and clear all the scales. It's three storm fort. Uh, this card was MVP versus the BA matchup because it comboed mostly with the uh, end of Anubis and Vanity's fiend. You know, if I storm fort the end or Dante tributing it for end of Anubis, they can't activate Doctor's Effect to add a card back. If they had a seer or a grab underneath it, those wouldn't activate to you know, especially some of the monsters or anything like that. So, like, this was an, an epic combo for the weekend for me. Unfortunately, I, if I would have drew it in top eight, and I probably would have moved on. But you know, this Yu-Gi-Oh, you can't win them all anyway, <laughs> unless you're Yugi. <laughs> uh, and I did two maxis and effect butter to round off my sideboard and uh, in, in the hand traps. This is the reason why I call it synchro, uh, click synchro. This is a tuner, but uh, yeah. I board in a man quite often, especially when you go second versus BAs. You know, Maxi, if they try to reveal this place something, you just draw infinite. Or they stop and you still have plays. Or if you uh effect the other tear guy, their turn's pretty much over. They can't do anything else with that. But yeah, so that's Clee Synchro. Um I encourage you guys to try it out. Uh this the deck was really, really good for me. I had a lot of fun with it. Uh, the four card combo that made me play this deck, because you know every deck has a combo, <laughs> it includes pretty much two cards, which is let's say uh, these two scout and tramplings. Pretty much can if you open up with these two, then you're already like on your way to the turn one tower OTK play that I'll be talking about. But you need essentially four cards: two uh, scout tramplings and like two other Klee cards. So what you want to do is you activate Scout. Scout pays 800 to so search for any other clean card in the deck. Uh, let's search for an Helix because I already have one carrier in my hand. Uh, then you're going to complete the scales with Tramplings. With scales set to a 4 and 9, that means you can spread your summon monsters from your hand or face up in an extra deck whose levels are between 5 and 8 in between the scales. So scales complete. I'm gonna pitch them summon carrier and helix. Tramplings effect activates when you successfully pitch them summon to target scout to add that to your hand. Then you can activate scout again. Pay 800 to go get big dog tower. Equip sacrifice to one of your monsters that makes them two tributes plus the one you have, and you contribute all of those for tower. Use it activate if you want to carry it to bounce a card, a monster, which you can't do anyway, and he was a pop back uh, back row. But sacrifice also activates to search turn one. You might want to get another scout just to complete. Make sure you have it, and then activating tower's effect to send one monster from your opponent's hand of field to the graveyard. Uh, with this combo, you know you drop tower turn one on the board. You still maintain your advantage. Actually, you plus one because these count. They come back next turn. Alright, so you have six and your opponent starts with four because they just minus one with this. So yeah, that's the uh, Cleave 4 deck pretty much. If you guys have any questions, comments, go ahead and drop them down below. But uh, yeah, I had a lot of fun. Uh, probably going to give this a go again for YCS Charleston. A uh, different version of course because the new set is legal. And, and yeah. Uh, that's Cleese. Promo signing off for now, guys.